Oh no, that chicken looks up. Uh... <laughs> French chicken. All right, okay. Hey everyone, welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Vince Stone, joined by Jordan uh, Kwong and uh, Pedro Matthias. It's Schwang. Schwang. Schwing. 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 Schwanger. Schwing. Bangers. Bangers. In, uh, <laughs> Pedro, fuck Windows 10. Um, stick your dick in Windows stick 10, your dick in Windows 10 Stick your dick in Windows, yes, that's what I said. <laughs> Together with you, Shot Realm Dynamic, helping us form Cocaine Voltron. No. Two of them, man. Two canes. I got a couple things I'm playing with. Um, so I, I, second week in a row, I've been doing the um, edit this show that we're doing right now on Sundays, streams, and playing back and forth. Like, trying to get an idea, you know, doing DaVinci Resolve, going through making the show. And I think I'm going to be doing it on YouTube. The first one I did on YouTube, I did it as a UHD stream, 20 megabits. It looked great. It was fun. I'm like, well, can I get away with like doing it on Twitch and like downscaling it? Because Twitch is going to be Twitch, man. And I didn't like the way it looked. But I do want to thank Mr. Uh, who was it? Uh, Katana Steel like hung out all four and a half hours with me. All right. Yeah, it was kind of I, fun. I, I think I was around for like the first hour and change. You were for a minute. You were you yeah. were lifting weights, I think, right? I was, yeah. Mm. Background noise. It's like, oh, well, Ben's Ben's doing that. Well, it's yeah, shit posting like, weights. Hey, company's good because that is like the most boring thing. Is like what you don't see is the uh, like just the, the silent staring at the computer screen. <sighs> the, 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 like eight hours, like after we do the show, I was like that's the boring worky part. But hey. It's a good time for people to pop in, ask questions. So if you want to do that tomorrow, I think I'm going to be starting at like eight or nine in the morning. Cause I, I was like, you know what? It, I was thinking about a good time, like 1 PM my time, which is really a good time, but that like puts everything back to like right. midnight to get everything done. I'm like, no, uh-uh. still, still got to get it out Sunday night. So yeah. You know, it's technically Monday. Okay. Yeah, the release date for the show has always been Monday. Okay. I, I, At I, least the, over here in GMT has always been Monday. Well, um, it was like Monday on East Coast time, on our time, uh, initially, because that's how long it took. I mean, Sunday was eaten, and mm. it would take a couple hours on Monday, then get it pushed out. And I mean, it wasn't until like after the first year I was able to get it back to like, okay, now we can get it out on Sunday. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, stick around, come hang out with me, and I'll probably put a notification. You know what? I think we got an, the notification still wired into our Discord, so that'll pop yeah, that's, up tomorrow. That's, that's how I found it the first time around. So. Yeah. All right. Cool. How about you, Jordan? Have you uh, been uh, playing around on carpet and door tile? Literally? No, I, I, I've not been playing around on any sort of physical material. I don't, I don't know. Lately, I've been getting really into Kyrgyzspiel. I've been reading a bunch of them. Uh, they're like old Good Prussian... Time. Yeah, old old Prussian war games, and there's like um there's like a, a a renaissance of them, and like people are making new ones in like uh, modern fantastical settings as opposed to like 17th century Prussia on like how to how to like invade the Austro-Hungarian Empire or something. Um, nukes, yeah, on nukes on horseback. That's the premium delivery system. Roll 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 two d six to find out. I mean, when you can't put your dick in Microsoft, I mean, put 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 your put your nuke on a horse. Nuke it a horse? That, that, that's the title of our new self-help book. If you can't stick your dick in windows, put a nuke on a horse. Look at your nuke now. Your nuke is now diamond. <laughs> look glass. at your nuke, nuke is now, back now a horse. To me. Now look at your nuke. Now back to me. I am not your nuke. I- <laughs> <laughs> Gotta keep them separated. Uh, Peter Mateus. Hello. Yes. I, I, I did things. Apparently, I need to do more things. Mostly the explanation of the timestamps that I sent Ven, along with the uh, video version of the Alpaca review. Uh, the It was not clear enough. Uh, that's good. Now I know that I need to be uh, more descriptive. So, fair enough. Okay. Um, so, yeah. The, the It's recorded. Hopefully. <laughs> we'll see if I have to re-record it. <laughs> Before the uh, the week is through, no, but, man, uh, yeah. no, there were like two or three breaks in it where Pedro just looks at, he's like, and "Stick your dick in Microsoft." Yeah. <laughs> no, there was a bit like in the middle because I'd been drinking fizzy drinks, and I a burp just came out. I was like, "Oh, hello!" 
Sorry about that. Mm. <laughs> so that's been recorded. <laughs> we could do some ADR over it, man. Just completely mm-hmm. change it like they did. Uh, what was it, Arnold Schwarzenegger in the uh, when he was? Uh... Oh yeah, yeah, J- uh, Lieutenant Coffee yeah. or, or Le- Le- Lieutenant Candy or in the Terminator Three Extra. Oh no, no, no! I'm talking about like that '80s, early '80s movie he did where he oh, played uh, oh, Hercules Zeus? in New York. Hercules, yes, Her- Hercules in New York. Where the, yeah, they, they dubbed over him, and then there's like the original. And there's like some dude named like James. He was like, "Hi, how are you doing?" I'm like, what? No, that's not, that's not right. <laughs> Hello, I am Hercules. He's like that. Yeah. Doesn't, yeah, it didn't work at all, man. Um, yeah, yeah. Something that does still work even after all these years is our equine. Um, equine? Yeah. Equine, equine. I think I think it doesn't matter. You Did know, we what have else? like equine. I want to say equity, but with horse, more horse in it. No, well, we we can have equine eggnog. It's the steam. Damn it! We've never done this before. What are you talking about? I don't know. I uh, thought Jordan was going to take a step, and he's like, "Nope." <laughs> the jump can do it to your left and to your right. The Verge, um, yes. pretty popular place. Uh, really good uh, information on PC building mm-hmm. and uh, don't other tech forget news. to uh, take everything that they say about computers tweezers with a grain of tweezers. Yes, uh, yeah. <laughs> but you know they were one of the very first um, mainstream media outlets to cover the Steam Deck in any kind of depth, and they. Um, said that Linux was basically holding the platform back and a load of other bullshit, but uh, year in, or almost, uh, they have done a re-review. It's like the long-term review, and it was far more positive. Go figure. Now, they did bring up some good points uh, in the original one, which there was a lot of stuff that wasn't really there, and with this, at least... It, again, it was a v- for very, very positive uh, new review that they did, and they said ah, that most of the issues Steam Deck were still addressed. Is not ready. Yes. <laughs> and they even mentioned Linux. It's like, no, Linux isn't actually uh, holding it back. It's like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> In Let's fact, they list Linux as a good thing. It doubles as a full Linux okay. PC. Oh. <laughs> what we need to do is focus on the bad and the verge says uh here's some of the bad things about the deck in its current incarnation is two hours or less of battery life at highest uh, the, yes uh the fidelity knob is turned up too high <laughs> you gotta be careful certain games if you crank them all the way up even if you can maintain like the 30 fps Pedro, i want you to show me a screenshot with a fidelity slider <laughs> I, I I would like There's you to show to me a, a screen. One of those. I would like you to show me a <laughs> screenshot of Skyrim or The Witcher on the Switch, and then compare it to a screenshot of the of Skyrim of the Rich Witcher or, Swi- or uh, Skyrim on the the Steam Deck? The deck on the Scritcher. Yes. Yeah, yeah. All right. So <laughs> another issue apparently is Bluetooth audio lag. You know what? It's Bluetooth. It's working at all. Be grateful. <laughs> Occasional crashes. Free. So yes, it's called a computer verge. Um. Yeah, my my Switch does that too. Uh, many yeah, popular. Uh, okay, here's the one I take a little bit of contention with. Many popular online multiplayer games still don't work. To which I'll say, many. Like we do. Do, do we have volumes here? Is this? They, they have are, a list uh, further down the article. Um, I didn't. Can't read. <laughs> and th- they only list like a seven or eight of them. Uh, it, it's the usual suspects: your PUBGs, Fortnite. Uh, Destiny. Rust, Hunt Showdown, Destiny 2. Uh, there's also a bunch of MMOs that use EAC that refuse to st- tick the stupid little box. But yeah, if you you were to select just the popular mainstream video games, yes, there's a fair number of them that don't work because they're multiplayer only and they have EAC. Although, the more I play with the deck, the more I realize that if I... Uh, I am outside of the house. It's probably not connected to the internet at all. So why do you well, want multiplayer the, games on the deck? And part, so part, part of what the article sing, uh, is doing, <laughs> singing the praising of the Steam Deck is like, hey, it's a great way to work through your gaming backlog uh, yeah. because you can play it wherever. <laughs> and yeah, I think mul- multiplayer, um, I think there's there's a possibility for there to be like a strong multiplayer component to the Steam Deck in, in so far as that it's a portable computer. I know like a lot of FGC players are really excited for it because like you take that along with your fight stick and all of a sudden mm-hmm. you have like a, you have a thing on the go. But yeah, mo- the, the big strength of uh, the Steam Deck has always been the single player experience. The fact that you can play basically any game released on any console 
um, just stuff on your backlog and you can play on the toilet, you can play in bed. And that that's a thing that PC gaming doesn't really have is a way to like easily access these games. The Steam Deck really fixes that issue. And we got to look at the reality. I mean, the Steam Deck is like strangely turned out to be the perfect device to play, you know, 2022 game of the year. Um, <laughs> <Yes>. Vampire Survivors. <laughs> Indie breakout game of the year. Uh, yep. <laughs> Vampire Survivors. Fight, fight, fight me, Strider. Okay, let's see how that goes. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> what it is genuinely oh. uh valve did a good and they've been um improving a, a lot uh over the past year or so so good on them and good on the verge for not doubling down on the stupid opinion that they had the first time <laughs> don't you dare say anything positive when no no see there is no redemption arc for anything pedro shut up <laughs> You're you're just you just got all that in your backlogs. I, I, mean, I mean, that, that, <laughs> yes, that, my that's Pedro's opinion. Backed up. <laughs> that, that, I, I don't know. Pe- Pedro is pretty convinced there isn't a redemption arc for several things. At least the Verge is one of them. Um, here's here's uh, <laughs> one of the things I posted a little bit earlier. Uh, I thought this was kind of funny, man. Yeah, because got got to move our heads. Yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I um I saw that uh, Linus, you know, the squeaky one. Mm-hmm. Not this one, the squeaky one. He did a like G. Who was it? GPT. GPT Win Four. Yeah, yep. they had a new. They got a new Steam Deck killer out, and you know, of course, like the basic bitch model of it that was like barely better than a Steam Deck specs wise. I should say, was nine hundred dollars. The one with yep. eight gigs of RAM. For our um, <laughs> audio listeners, what I'm throwing down here is the, the little meme of like you know seeing the specs of any Steam Deck killer. You're like, mm, okay, look at these specs. There's nice. Then you get the eh face of like. Then you see the price of anything called a Steam Deck killer. Which I'd like to remind my brothers and sisters in the audience, ain't no such a damn thing. That I mean, that was old Steam machines prices, right? Like, yeah, no, right. no, no one bought those. <laughs> this so. is just one of the things the Steam Deck and Valve has been able to run, just reckonate people at four hundred bucks. That, yeah, subsidize the console as much as you can, so that people then spend more money on your platform. That's how Microsoft and Sony and Nintendo have been running very successful console launches. So, yeah. <laughs> well, this is why we need more exclusives. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, PC Games. Then that wasn't a stupid article. At all. <laughs> well, you know, you know spe- speaking speaking of uh, exclusives, there's a lot of exclusive fighting games out there. We don't get a lot of them on Linux, but and we esp- yeah. especially don't get a lot of them in the indie space. This is a new one, and uh, oh, especially there not by Bye. Pedro. Uh, I, I'm 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 still here. I think. <laughs> no, you're not. You you died. <laughs> Gone forever. <laughs> yes, R. I. P. Uh, my Rest video has Pedro. died. Uh, but yeah, it's the um, Frame Makers is a Smash uh, type of fighting game with uh, well indie game characters. Uh, there's a couple of ones you recognize, like Octodad and the um, the runner the, from Bit Trip Runner and the Sus yep. uh, peeps Among from, Us guys. Um, oh, yeah. it's got the <laughs> Vova Vovas. Yeah, the, yep. the V V V V V V V. So it is, it, it's an early access and it's, it, it's a bit pricey for what it is right now, but it is a fighting game. Although th- with them releasing this in early access, mm-hmm. by the time that the proper release comes around, either it'll be dead or the skill ceiling for online play will be so high that most people just bother. <laughs> Not if nobody plays it. <laughs> well, yes, that, that, that's the dead bin. <laughs> they're, they're, they're trying to help that out though. One thing they're doing right from the beginning that I think is a strong move is they're adding content creation tools so you can create like your own fighters and assets and moves and stuff and levels. So that's always good for ensuring that there will never be a shortage of content for your games. And yeah, it's always nice to see more fighting games on Linux. Like we get maybe one or two of them a year if we're lucky. Uh, yeah. yeah, we're always like hella desperate. Uh, the pixel art in this looks really good. And really, really, the only thing I'm going to say is um, it's early access, but more importantly, it's also 19.99, and I don't know how I'm feeling about paying 20 what stinky cash to QA a game, Brad. <laughs> yeah, especially. And, and it's, it's going to suck for a while too. That's what a lot of the reviews are saying. It's like the foundation is there, but they still need to actually like complete the thing. But so. Jordan, it's got the rollback net codes, so it can do no wrong. <laughs> well, it, it, it's, it's doing better than other fighting games i guess if it has online play and you hope to have a competitive fighting game you kind of need it <laughs> let's have a listen um the opening shut, shut salvo up, Fighter from crystal neck 
who says, you know, hey, this is early access review from January 19th. These are just uh, super early impressions. First hour not recommended. TLDR, it has promise and potential, but the overall asking price is a bit too steep to just for the content that's there right now. I wait for a few major updates down the road. Yeah. You know what? What's our price, lads? Um, at $19.99, because this is all, you know, we're always looking for stuff to play around with, with a bunch of people, especially in the after shows. And, and this has online PvP co op and all that. 20 bucks, bit much. Um, you know, I would probably say early access. Okay, my first question. Let me dial that back for everybody. How much are you going to ask for when this thing's done? That's a, that's a good question. I, I wonder, too, how much of that is just, like, licensing for some of these indie game characters. Like, hey, you got, you got to give us a cut if you're going to use our IP. Wait. So, I mean, then you, you, get, you got to make it up in volume, man, because you're not going to make it up in 1999 with a fighting game. Like, that's, there's too many. Yeah, I, too I think maybe t- $10 maybe is a good asking price $10, for something. $10, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 15 at the most, I would say. 20, I, yeah. 20 is too much. 20 is too much. 20 is, like, it better be done. Mm-hmm. 20 yeah. is like double a game price uh a week or so after release that's yeah <laughs> yeah like, like, yeah f- f- 15 at the most but you know we're gonna be watching this one because again if, if it turns out good and if it releases then you know shit i think gross. it'd be fun i was talking about that um yesterday i think during our uh track mini game it would check us out hang out with us on fridays we'll be back on tuesdays um but i i've never played smash Bros. So having something like that, but with indie characters, I'd be down with. And we should point out, it's got its own character creator customizer. Yeah, full, full yeah. content creation suite. So I, again, like I'm really, really impressed that like they're even considering that at this stage of early access. That's usually something that gets added a lot later. So mm. wish him best of luck, and uh, I, I look forward to it being on sale. Maybe for like less than nineteen ninety nine. If you want to send us some <laughs> copies, we'll fucking play it in the after show. I'm like that. Yeah. This yeah. is this yeah, is our yeah, jam. Yeah, yeah. Our jam. So. uh <laughs> Let's talk about Joshua and his sexy, sexy spider legs. Spider quap, spider quap. The spider <laughs> does the quap. That's Joshua. He's just minding his own damn business, getting around. Then, uh, turns out he's got unique legs. He's a racket. He wants to find. He's his only leg. got two. <laughs> he need. He's on a mission. He's trying to find his long lost prosthetic leg collection. <laughs> I, it's like honestly, this looks like a playable version of Bots Are Stupid. <laughs> Like something that well, you can actually interact actually with the controller. Have, yeah. Yeah, you actually have to control the thing instead of writing down what you want the thing to do. So <laughs> looking at this, I'm just getting like little like little hits of whistles of like not what it is on the cover. Just <laughs> I I dig the lo fi aesthetic. It looks really cool. You get the lo fi stuff, I, but you just get the overall feeling of like this is hyper intentional lo fi. This is not yeah. yeah. Oh, it's currently forty percent off. Eight thirty nine. That's a very good price. About this. That's a very good price. Needs a controller. Don't try and play this with a keyboard. Yeah. That's... We talked about this when it was in early access, and you know, I'll, I'll say this again. This because I immediately get like Baba is you type vibes of like when I first saw Baba is you, and I'm like, this is either some like low key brilliant, you know, <laughs> fuck you puzzler with all kind of extra shit in it, or it's just a really bad low effort game. That. Yeah, I, I, that's what I'm getting from this. I'm like, there's probably layers. Like, this thing's a straight up, you know, parfait. Considering I, I mean, the uh, graphics requirements, I think that's legit on the lo fi side. Re- recent, <laughs> recent reviews. Intel HD 4400? Yeah. Uh, recent reviews are very positive. So it looks like yep. uh, it got out of early access and it's like actually pretty good. So, funny yeah. Game. I, old funny game. Literally 100% of this game's reviews are positive. Out of how many? That's a- <laughs> You know what? Send us some keys. We'll throw you in at least like one negative. Just make it so so it doesn't look so sketchy, right? Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> we we got we got to go through the Fargate. Then it's it's not a Stargate. It's different. Farlanders. Farlanders. Yeah, uh, it's a uh, hipster pixel colony sim management game. I actually really like the uh, the the pixel art here, especially in the trailers. It has that sort of old school like PC painted pixel look. Bring tickles my little nostalgia organ a little bit. Uh, but yeah, you, um, you, it's a turn-based colony builder. It kind of visually, it kind of reminds me of Factorio a little bit. Dune um, 2. Yeah, de- definitely some Dune 2 vibes. Not so much versus, uh, you got to make sure that your colonists are happy. They're fed. There's oxygen, so on and so forth. You what can go underground. What was that pipeline game, Giggity? Uh, you remember the, like, the electricity 
Oh yeah, yeah. That, the, 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 one, oh, the one with um, like the story that was actually like really good for and you're just like yeah oh, the, 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 the virus or whatever starts yeah. taking over just as you send the the dudes in the rocket uh Mars Industries or S- Mars like Power that. Industries yeah Mars Power Mars Industries, Power Industries. yeah All right, yeah <laughs> sorry yours no no yeah uh, uh, Okay. Uh, <laughs> to me, it looks a lot like a 4X type of situation, but with square tiles instead of uh, hexagons. Maybe, okay, there's no extinction level events happening, so maybe just 3X, unless you deliberately set out to kill all of your colonists, which then, yes, absolutely 4X. I mean, come on, man. We've all had those days. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that, that just turns it into an Elon Musk like, simulator. He, so even as a know. kid, you know, you would come home and have a bad day. And you know what, SimCity? That episode so something. Here comes Godzilla. Oh <laughs> yep. no! Just make a save, yeah, and then yeah, volcano, aliens, Godzilla. Just <laughs> no. Does list Steam OS as a system requirement though for recommended? So that's always good to see. No, uh, no, no, that's good. <laughs> yeah. And um, a very teeny tiny update from someone you probably very would not teeny, expect. Tiny? Oh, you mean like that? It works now is pretty small <laughs> yeah yeah a uh, very teeny tiny update for a very very big game like which is currently of, uh... 10 per, uh 70 percent off which is significant but yeah no uh the sales must really be drying up over there in uh division two land for ubisoft to suddenly give two shits about um their game it, right? running on the steam deck <laughs> <laughs> gotta get gotta get on that deck, man. P- people want to play your games on on the I, go. Yeah, okay. Uh, fix an issue that caused the game to be unable to boot on the Steam Deck. So thank you, Ubisoft. Now stop harboring um, allegedly abusive executives. No, okay. they okay. make us too much money. <laughs> it's currently nine dollars. <laughs> buy buy lately, some courts. Man. Uh, well, yeah, yeah the, ball, off. the ball is in your court now, people. Um, that was the last thing the Ubisoft was in trouble for this most recent week. I didn't know what the Division 2 was. I went and looked, and I'm like, oh, it's like not quite popular. It's a shooty uh, pew-pew uh, game. Open, open World Rainbow Six, basically. Yeah, yeah, the third-person shooter, uh, post-apocalyptic New York type of situation. I also assume <laughs> it's like pretty shitty, because like I, none of these screenshots are showing gameplay, and I don't see a video on this thing, which is not yeah. a good sign. R- reviews yeah, are mixed. They're breaking the uh, they're breaking the Steam rule of uh-huh. having to have a video in the store. L- listen, listen, big companies don't have to follow rules. Clearly, that's for, that's for peasants. <laughs> uh, how much is it? Nine bucks. Yeah, I am not. I don't. Mm, well, I don't know. I, like how I, that's that's the thing though. This is like primarily a multiplayer game. How is the community? Because yes. if it's if it's decent, then like maybe it's worth a look. If everything's just like fucking rotten and toxic, then yeah, like give this a pass. <laughs> you mean Dota oh. two? Yeah. Yeah. League, League of Legends, what? Uh, Anything with online? Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Over Overwatch, yeah. yeah. So, Shing is a game like Jordan and I. We got did we finish it? We got through it. Um, we I don't I don't think we finished it, but we did play through a bunch of it. We ran into Ultra Mega Chicken. Yeah, uh, kicked our. I think it kicked our ass. Oh, that it was fucked us up, man. We're just yeah. like chilling out playing. We're like. Pfft. We did something. This is huge chicken showed up and just wrecked us. Shing was kind of interesting, though. And you, maybe you never heard of it, man. And you know what? I Sometimes I fear the developers have that same attitude towards the game because it seems like every 12 to 14 months, they remember that they released a game. And they go, hmm, you know what? We should probably throw out an update for it. So we get Shing version 2, not 1. And they've done a couple of good things. Mostly the steam deck gentlemen because they're trying to get this thing deck certified and i think that's this is good to see right that's very yeah. good to see especially that last point about uh, video and control settings not syncing via steam cloud anymore it's like can, can we have all games do that please literally all games you want to sync save games cool don't sync the fucking settings thank you so <laughs> the the unique thing about shing like it, it it's it's one unique gameplay mechanic is the the sword play is all just like freeform you use the uh, analog stick the right yeah. analog stick to uh to actually do the That's swings really bad yeah so what what what, what it, it's it's, it's not to. great it's not great <laughs> what i was gonna say is what would be neat is finding a way to integrate like the areolas or the touch screen so you can get some like fruit ninja shit going mm. that could that could be neat Maybe. Or use the gyro too, because Steam Deck has a gyro built in. Yeah, just get get, yeah. get some better better ninjaing, nin, nin, ninjing, whatever. You are a ninja. <laughs> Maybe we could ask a ninja. Do you think he's going to show up on the podcast? I don't or, know. 
I, I mean, we, 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 we can ask a ninja, right? How like, many I think degrees of ninja? <laughs> ninja separation. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the ninja Kevin Bacon ratio. <laughs> I don't know. There's got to be something to it. So, yeah, there is that. Like, the only thing I didn't, I, Shing, it was well done. Multiplayer, uh, online multiplayer, had a light export, runs smooth, it runs great. Controls like ass because they were just doubled down on, like, you know, this is one of the things you got to w- w- think about. Like, when you're trying to do something different, you're innovating a little bit. It doesn't always stick. And this is like, we've got the, like, move thing. I, would, you, would you have rather had, like, uh, some Street Fighter, like, special move type stuff versus the flailing, spinning balloon? So, I, I, see, I don't know. I'm of two minds of it because, like, uh, that's how the sword works in Metal Gear Solid. And I really like the sword in Metal Gear Solid. So, <laughs> but that's uh, also the, uh, the game. You're, yeah, you're the talking game about the me. platinum design one, right? <laughs> uh, no, even, even uh, one and two has the same thing. But yeah, uh, uh, the platinum one also has that with the, with the sword. The Revengeance. Between. Revengeance, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, the, the game that it re- reminded me of was Silver, Nanomachines which done. you use the mouse wiggles for the, uh, the sword strikes. So, Remember Hammer yeah, Fight? Yeah. No, no. <laughs> See, now I want a mouse with a fucking accelerometer in it, so you legitimately have to shake your mouse around. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, and it that, knows that, when that's... you just pick up the mouse and toss it halfway across the room. That, that's the you whole know thing what? about that's controllers having accelerometers now. Accelerometer in it, man. Yeah, you could, it, yeah. it does. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, now now tilting actually does shit in the game. It used to be that it, it was just in your brain, but now you can actually map that to something. So pretty yeah. decent. Uh, one last thing before we get out of here, uh, game a, a couple loopy. months yeah. ago. We threw chairs at it. Uh, loop has version 2.0. It's not Loop 2. That's not, uh-huh. the, it's not the sequel. It is just an enhanced version Electric of the loop original. Loop. Yeah, uh, they've rebalanced a bunch of the puzzles, added some quality of life uh, stuff, as well as added some new levels. And considering that I was able to get through the entirety of the game in an hour, and I took a generous bathroom break in the process. Yeah, <laughs> maybe, maybe padding the runtime so that it hits that two-hour mark. Might be it might be a little necessary so that people don't refund your game. It wasn't a bad game, and the story was all right. Um, mm-hmm. it does a lot of non-verbal visual storytelling, storytelling all yeah. the time, everywhere. That's very good. Yeah, yeah, and uh, so yeah, uh, def- definitely check it out. Um, I I don't know if I would go back to it because you oh, know no. I, I yeah <laughs> e- even even for the new puzzles. But like if you Man, if you haven't it, checked it out, three bucks, three bucks right now. I'm yeah, three three bucks. Yeah, go go check it out if you haven't played it. it yeah, it, w- it won't take you that long. It's a, it's a fun enough experience. Also, a uh, big announcement. Uh, they've changed their studio name to Team Chili for extra bathroom breakage. Mm. <laughs> it's, 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 it's not Team Cherry. It's Team Chili. Team Chili. <laughs> in D. All right. Coming up next. We're coming for your voodoo cards. Throw mm. them out. Oh, oh no. Peg. And uh, if you have no idea what goes on in between these segments, because you've only ever seen the produced version or listened to, more likely, uh, then you should totally join us Wait live. a minute, Pedro, but will Windows 10 go down on you in a theater? Don't let your Windows well, 10 go down on does, me. Whether it does, you still have to stick your dick in it. Uh, but <laughs> that too is so, the thing that happens in the in-between Pee-wee segments. Herman. Pee-wee Herman, if you're listening. <laughs> This is how you do it and don't get caught. Paul Rubens. <laughs> yeah. Paul Rubens, please come on our podcast. We would love to talk to you. That'd about be fucking dope. Literally yeah. anything. It's like that, that huge that <laughs> Yeah. Uh, if you, if you want to help us get big enough to get Paul Rubens on the show, then I you should head on over to... Uh, no, I'm just like, can you do a magic trick? Here's a Windows 10 CD. Um. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, no, he's going to do the Joker's magic trip, the trick, though. He's going to cram it through Pedro's head. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, patreon.com slash the other cast join up. You get some cool stuff. You can get into our discord channel where we're our, where we are the other six days of the week. You can also get access to that by subbing to us on Twitch here, twitch.tv slash the next You can RSVP for game streams. You can get in and listen to just audio versions of the podcast. We got, uh, notifications, um, exec or early, early access to some of the videos in the announcements channel. Uh, we got a store as well. Store.linuxgamecast.com. Go buy yourself some LGC merch. Uh, t-shirts, coffee cups, fanny packs, stickers, no booty shorts yet. One mm. day, one, one day booty shorts, okay. but not today. You can get a tote bag though, and maybe convert it into some booty shorts. We got wish zones. Go to linuxgamecast.com, put your mouse over the support button, buy Pedro an air fryer. He needs to make the potatoes. <laughs> They're so crispy and delicious. Uh, uh I need no, it would use, uh, yeah, uh, mostly for. 
I, I, need, I need I need new you wheels. Need rollerblade. Yep. <laughs> Cast <Plus> wheels. Yeah. <laughs> yep. App- apparently they're really good for not shredding your office floor, which is a thing that I have a problem with. All right. Yep. I need a Canadian invention called an ice cube. It's, I thought it was water cube. Yeah, I didn't know um, radial engineering was Canadian. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they're from Canada. I'm like, oh, no wonder that shit's so expensive. Um, right. Epic motherboards and other shit like that. So thank you for your support. You make all this possible. We got some people we need to thank this week. Because apparently aromatic dev has struck again. <gasps> Not content just to deliver. For Jordan. Bok Bok. Bok Bok. You got some Bok Bok later in. I got, I got That's some chicken. <laughs> oh no, that chicken looks up. Uh... <laughs> French chicken. All right, okay. <laughs> he, uh... there, there, there's your screenshot for the for the cover gun. Enjoy. So, uh, oh man, hang on. Uh, now here's the thing. Aromatic dev wrote in. Aromantic or aromatic? Man, listen, fuck off. I don't know. <laughs> Does he smell real nice or is he really nice to hang out with? So uh, here's the thing we got to throw in. I'm going to throw this for you to read, Jordan, down at the bottom. Okay. Have the notes because he's like, yo, I didn't know about the wishlist thing to write in. Read for me, punk. Oh, <laughs> bottom of the show notes. Bottom of the show. Oh, I'll very, very bottom. Okay. Hi, all. Sorry, I didn't realize you'd be reading the Amazon Gish messages, so it's not too late. Here it goes. Shout out to Leo and Dan from the Linux User Space podcast. By the way, it's aromatic dev, not a romantic dev. There's no romance in software development, only suffering. I was thinking aromantic as in someone who does not experience romance, not a, not a space romantic dev. Dude, dude, why, why, but, why you got to be like singling out Nori like that? Is she, is she a dev? <laughs> now I'm just completely lacking romance. Okay. That, 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 that's just aromantic. That's my fault. I'm an aromantic partner. <laughs> <laughs> well, so th- so there you go. He's actually a stinky dev. Again, I keep wanting to give people the benefit of the doubt, and it turns out that I'm just wrong. People hey, are people are stinky. Uh, so yeah, I also received not as cool as uh, well. You know what? I'm going to say equally as useful though. I mean, utilitarian to a fault. We're talking about Amazon Basics HDMI cables, not point nine Ooh. meters. Shit like this ends up because I don't like we got a the wish list just for the studio and like hey man you'll find cables on there all the time. These are also useful because I'm on a bit of a mission to clean up like this side where the uh three guest PCs are. And just clean up some of that spaghetti nightmare. Shorter so shorter cables. Shorter cables, umbilical, wired up, logically laid out instead of just like having to pick up the clump and dust yeah, under it. Tr- tr- trying to figure out, like, if I wiggle this one, what, what other side 100%, wiggles? 110%. 110%. Break so. the cable like the, the other dude did with the um, oh, yeah, RG45. That, that's, how, that, that's how you never extract a cable from a switch. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> of course, Aromatic Dev wrote, send, enjoy your gift. All right. No. Okay. I will. You can abuse the notes. <laughs> that's kind of the point. You can yeah, make us they- say... A lot of things. <laughs> you could have made me recite the entirety of the Kenny Rogers roaster sketch, well, and I see, would be an evildoer. It, it was like done Kenny better Rogers. with the um, Linux Usual Space podcast. See, that's yeah. a smart way to do it. There's a plug, plug. Yeah. right? Yeah, good free, free commercials. <laughs> well, not free commercials. You paid for the chicken mask, right? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Patreon.com for oh, wait, wait. Uh, uh, spe- speaking of donors, we got to thank Don M for resubbing to us twenty seven times. That's a lot oh, yes. of times, right? <laughs> and yeah, uh with resubbed us. for i think 30 something i don't know it's probably on the twitch dashboard that i don't keep open we, we, we got we got johnny too apparently johnny pledged some stuff johnny That's- is also aromatic yeah okay well, 39 then- months for mere ppc 39? yesterday yeah okay <laughs> that's almost 40 allegedly i'm not sure i don't have my abacus <laughs> Listen, you're, you're, you're old. You need your walker. And it's past 3.30 in the yeah, morning yeah. here. I'm not going to do maths. <laughs> it, 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 it's past 4 o'clock in the afternoon, Then It's your bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> we got we to gotta, we gotta talk about RIP retro gaming. You're not, you're not going to be able to play your old voodoos anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, it's quite a sad, sad time. This comes from dri dev list over at freedesktop.org. And we're talking about... Sun's letting a little bit of support for some cards that you might know, you might love. You might still have. They might be collecting dust. 
So we're gonna be losing support for the Voodoo Banshee, Voodoo 3, Voodoo 4, Voodoo 5, along with uh, R128 support, uh, Sis, and uh, Matrox, man. Sad. Sad. Play, yeah, play the, especially the R128. I have a laptop that still has an R128 in it, and um, that's the only one I really cared about. Then again, it's been gone from Mesa for a few years now, so... Fine, yeah, whatever. How dare you say that this card <laughs> is still not VGA. usable? AGP. AGP? Oh, no, no, the one VGA the, port. The VGA, on yeah. It. Yeah. This is a dual GPU card curdle developers. How dare? This is even, it's even got a Molex connector for seats. It's, it's like a, extra no, power. No. Oh, to, to, really, to really melt your video card. Yeah. This was the 3090 of its time. Don't, it was, it's too young. Don't put it down, man. I could still probably make it do something on the fence. It's been like, brr. It's still uh, a real boy. Yeah. New, Nouveau actually has a change with this too. They're ditching a bunch of the old IOCTLs. Uh, because and because of this, this is why they're uh, removing the drivers. So now uh, Nouveau oh, is sure. going to require the SLI uh, too. Fuck you all. Oh shit! <laughs> That's a lie connector. Now, now, can can it play Crisis? Is the real question. Probably, yeah. I think when did Crisis One come out? Two thousand seven ish. Two thousand seven was Far Cry. I think Crisis okay. was like two thousand nine. May, I may be wrong. Two thousand eight. I, 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 it was so Someone long ago. Someone go look man. it up. Voodoo yeah. Five Fifty Five Hundred. Um, d- d- does it run Crisis? Yeah. All right. Well. <laughs> You might you might be able to get it running those, those old game run games running especially Crisis using bundles they got a new re- release out it's version fifty uh, and going through the change log here it's mostly translations bug fixes and feature enhancements but uh, if you have VKD three D on your system you can toggle it um, it'll now asynchronously fetch installers and components so you don't have to wait for every single wine component to download in sequence that's always nice that's going to speed some things things up. And uh, yeah, just at the end of the uh, the notes here, always got to th- shout them out because they keep shouting out the new uh, devs that are contributing to the project. And I think that's a great way to encourage people to actually like take a look at your code and contribute because, you know, you get a shout out, make a contribution. And uh, yeah, b- little update. Uh, Jordan was correct. I was wrong. <laughs> 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 yeah, no. Um, Far Cry was 2004. Wow, that was a lot earlier than I thought. But yeah, no, Bottles is Welcome very... Welcome to getting old, Pedro. <laughs> yeah. As you crumble Bottles to is dust. a very good way if you want to just have a something to easily manage um, wine profiles, effectively, prefixes. It, it's a very good GUI. There's a very good GUI. <laughs> yeah, very, very no nonsense. If you just need something to manage mm-hmm. wine, yeah, like uh, mm-hmm. very simple. L- Lutri- yeah, like you, you might say, like, what what is the advantage of this over Lutris? Lutris covers everything. So if you don't want like yes. all the other shit that Lutris does, don't don't mess with it. Use use something like bottles where you right. just like yeah, where you just get this thing you need. Quite this clean one's to just for wine. <laughs> yeah, this is a lot more like specialized. It's like hey, if you're going to be using bottles, you know you need to be using bottles. This is one mm-hmm. of those things. So excellent work. Now a question for the ages is. What does Godot, Godot need? I just re- what? I read that as ah. Ah, it's triple A, man. <laughs> Three A's and double A and triple A. No quad A's, though. Um, what's it missing? What does it need? What, what's that last little bit that's going to make it a real boy? <laughs> well, you know what? Here's what they think. You know, there's like, mm, can we do some work with the physics? Possibly scripting, core engine, GD extensions, a lot more. So what is missing? Streaming. All right. Yeah, texture streaming. Uh, st- yeah, streaming all the things that's probably needs to kind of get up streaming. to speed. You know, you, mm-hmm. you need to break, you know, come kicking the door in with that like 2013 technology. Low level <laughs> rendering access. Okay. Scene job system. Okay. I don't even know what swarms are, but apparently you fucking need a couple. Large team VCS. Okay. This makes sense. Commercial asset store. Here we go. That's what I want to talk about. <laughs> what? Whoa, 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 I'm just what, thinking what, what of the current about? examples that we have of. Uh, Commercial asset stores and Pedro, the uni- Okay, we've had this conversation in Discord. Sometimes, sometimes all I need is just a good looking fucking tree, Pedro. That's all I need. Yes, guaranteed. I, I, but you maybe have a more restrictive license a than what tree you with need. titties. <laughs> <laughs> so than I, what Unity currently offers because we don't need the Godot Ghetto. That's so, what I'm so, saying. <laughs> but that's that's the thing though. I, I don't I maybe maybe for double A, I think an asset store might 
double a quote unquote like not not non big publisher titles yeah. uh, an asset store Indeed. might be useful because <laughs> you you don't have an asset team to like go and create all these new things so you know if you don't if you need a tree or a gun or a wall or a building sure you know, thing i like to call place. prototyping yeah it, it, or yeah just having having placeholders um but for for triple a i mean th these are these are companies that can afford asset teams and yeah may, may, maybe not necessarily it'll definitely improve adoption if more people can like bootstrap their game faster with godot and mm -hmm. i think that was the, that was the big advantage with unity and like this is why we got so many mm -hmm. unity ghetto titles is because the barrier of entry was low but for something like godot i don't think that's necessarily a bad thing i think just getting it in the hands of more people and getting them experience stuff well, like i think the mechanism because it wasn't until recently that they restructured the organization to where they could have a uh Paid, a, a paid asset uh, store yeah. which i think yeah. that's also you know that's one there's your reason if you're wondering and this wasn't out of like well we're too good for it i'm like we're just gonna wait and we didn't could make money <laughs> and yeah. hey you know here's another thing though they want to revisit visual scripting to which i'm saying you need to shit or get off the pot on this one because you had visual scripting you killed it and everyone's just like you know what gd script's simple enough to use we're just going to use that so after you had <laughs> visual scripting, you nuked it, and you want to bring it back into some extent. Just let's everybody just use GD script. Really good. Yeah, yeah. Just, just, just focus on making GD script as like good and yep. simple and like yes. as, as painless as possible. I think that that's the moral of the story here. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think they're they're on their way to becoming a very capable engine with the with the corporation now. They can actually do stuff like console support, which is which has been like the big thing. I think that has been stopping Godot from making big strides mm -hmm. is being able to like play your games on non PC platforms, because that's really where the money is when it comes to like actually indie selling indie. Games. Yeah, you like Steam Deck. It needs more exclusives. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Why, yeah, sure, you why can not? go up to Valve and say, yeah, please make uh, <laughs> exclusives for the Steam Deck, but they have to run Godot. <laughs> Not, 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 not source, not their own in-house engine. Not no, all. just get, just get that. Although to be fair, Valve is kind of to blame why there aren't many Source Two games. Apparently, um, L listen, Josh, listen, pa Pedro, Josh this Ashton. is not, this is not the part of the show where we shit on Valve. That's the hate mail segment. <laughs> Come on, time oh, and yeah, place. No, the, time and place. Some of that this week. Listen, he just wants them to release Ricochet, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> VR, VR Ricochet, VR. <laughs> dude, I, I would play the fuck out of VR Ricochet and just projectile vomit everywhere. All right, uh, Duelist. Do, 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 do. It's time. Yes, I, I love me some children's card games. So saddle up, kids. It's story time. So the original Duelist was a tactical uh, grid based uh, verse P2P game uh, that had, had a card deck building mechanic. Uh, kickstarted back way back when in 2014, uh, got released in 2016, but, uh, Namkai Bando bought it out and what the, t the project was eventually killed in 2020. Nothing but, oh, yeah. Good things um, happened. Yeah, well, I mean, so, I mean, <laughs> uh, what, a good thing happened. The, uh, original code was released under creative commons. Uh, mm -hmm. and there is actually, uh, there's a game on steam called duelist two that uses this code to basically just recreate the game. Um, is there in, a link in, in to entirely. that anywhere? Uh, no, cause uh, I was too lazy to put it in there. Okay. Uh, yeah, but it, <laughs> I, I, I will include it for the published version, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, uh, if you want to play around with the source code or if you want to contribute to Duelist 2, um, you can do that through here. This might be what it looks like and it's free to yes, play. It is no, free that, play. that is the correct one. Yes. <laughs> Visual aids. Ha for old video show. We do the things. <laughs> ah, it's, it's an audio podcast. Well, the live stream has a video element to it. <laughs> you, you, got, you just got to close your eyes and imagine, man. Uh, Came what, out of, uh, December 7th. How did I miss that? Damn. <laughs> I write this review with I don't recommend knowing I will probably don't. I loved it in 2016. No, he doesn't like it anymore. Uh, game is mad, put it bluntly. That's a blunt meh. It's so basically saying that like card games have oh, moved uh, on. Since he assumes that Duelist Two is a is supposed to be a sequel, sequel instead of being the whole. Oh yeah, the game didn't exist anymore. <laughs> well, well, Pedro, I hope you know the developers are obviously abyssal players. Oh, <laughs> some deep cuts for the Duelist lore uh, why, why, connoisseur. Why would, why would I play this free game, which is an obvious cash grab? Sure, yep. Yeah. Makes sense. <laughs> okay, now this one, this one really stingy monetization in need of a few balance packs. So, is was there like some monetization bullshit? They still got a hack out of its DNA. This maybe, could, maybe it's actually like be. in the game proper. Yeah, 
Because, you know, I, I was talking about that. Uh, you know, we see that sometimes when we see uh, Android titles that have been brought mm -hmm. over to Steam, you know, like from they were built from the ground up for that, you know, to get you to spend, you know, yeah, this one does there. have in-app purchases. Yeah, that, that there's the indicator on the Steam store there. Mm, so is that still okay. enabled? From the I, I guess if it, they, yeah. <laughs> maybe if they <laughs> if like, actually need that to review at face value. Maybe there's like a, I, I don't know, maybe I should stop giving people the benefit of the doubt, but you know, maybe there's like <laughs> multiplayer server fees that you got to cover and that's how they do it. Hmm. Awesome. Hosting's not cheap. Okay. That's the thing. Uh, so maybe we can just, uh, well, don't worry. Even if it was expensive, we could just uh, download it and play it in this new uh, game image, app image game packer. Packer, well, packer. someone would have to package it first, but yes, uh, formerly known as um, uh, Yar! <laughs> Straight up fucking pirate, no. <laughs> uh, no, no, it wasn't, but it's called Game Image Windows now, 10? it's available on, uh, on GitLab, and it is, um, well, it's basically a little tool that allows you to create app images for games, and if even if it's a game that doesn't run natively, which is kind of the point, if it needs an emulator or if it needs wine, it'll just have the app image for the emulator or wine ready and then create another app image with the game itself and then combine the two into a single app image. My video Buy just went shit combines. again. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the, the, this very much has the possibility of making game pirates, I mean portability, on Linux, a much better love story uh, than it has been up to this point. Uh, and yeah, you can go full Inception and had like three levels of um, app images <laughs> inside the one app image. <laughs> Here, here's your pro tip. Get right the fuck out of here for these Debian-based systems. Like, uh, How about Debian-based systems, but not Debian? But not Debian? Yeah. No, mm -hmm. no don't add universe. <laughs> don't add your fucking... <laughs> Ubuntu's universe repo to it. That's not good. To be fair, uh, Debian isn't exactly Debian based. Debian is Debian. <laughs> but yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, it is a very. Uh, if you look at the syntax and the example that they give, it's very easy to use. It's very easy to package up your own game. Yeah, simple YAML format. Yeah. <laughs> uh and and like yeah it's, it'll certainly make distribution easier and like the and again like this is the whole we've designed this reactor to power our future not to build bombs yeah we're gonna go build those bombs um this uh the, the whole the whole notion of like wrapping all these guys up in uh, app images hosting these guys is gonna be legally dubious so maybe maybe don't do that this is more of intended <laughs> to be a roll your own situation well, where if you want like if you want to have like emulated like this. games think about it like this I, i'm looking at okay here's your fucking use case right here because i just saw Yuzu. yuzu Yep. And I have a directory now in my dump folder after I went through like three pages of Google research because everyone's like, hush, hush, wink, wink, say no more about how exactly to get Yuzu set up mm -hmm. to fucking emulate Switch things because nobody wants Nintendo to sue them. Understandably. Yep. But once I finally got the right moon glyphs put together and like I went to the right like uh, mm -hmm. mega links <laughs> to find the right things in the versions, I fucking saved it, zipped it up. This way, you could just uh, go ahead and package it along with the ROM bot. Yeah, ex exactly. This will be great for your Steam. This Allegedly. is like perfect for Steam decks, right? Like, First, if, yeah. You, you just, just got to dump your own ROMs. Dump your yeah. own ROMs. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's the legal <laughs> workaround here. That, that's the legality of it. You have to have the game. Also, the one thing that may <laughs> curtail piracy, and I don't think it's going to be that much, um, not that much of a downside, but those app images are going to get big depending on the game you're trying to download, man. You're oh, talking yeah. about like de depending if you're if you're shipping wine and like a triple A game, mm -hmm. yeah, hundred yeah, gigs. Just easy. look at yeah. the size of Proton. It's uh, at least another eight hundred megabytes. On well, top I mean, of the game. here's the whole thing, though. I mean, um, if you're already dealing with like hundred gigabytes to fucking download, yeah, what, what, what's another ten? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah but, when uh, a game, it, you know, triple uh, A games uh, are like, one hundred and thirty like, gigs. Short, short of BitTorrent, though, it's going to make, like, hosting it a pain in the ass, because, like, the, the bandwidth for all that shit, yeah, it's crazy. That sounds uh, like a, yeah. a good thing, depending on what's, whose side you're yeah. on there, right? You're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. So, so like, w whether or not this is the silver bullet to piracy on Linux is going to make all the Linux pirates come out of the woodwork? I don't know. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it, it, it's certainly a neat piece of technology. Should be used responsibly. So, mm -hmm. I mean, how is this... Uh, I mean, if, if 
you just want to distribute your game outside of Steam, I mean, fucking maybe. I'm, yeah, no, like, I actually, yes, if you're just looking for an easy way to make, like, app image installers for your games, mm-hmm. this seems like a pretty handy yeah, way to do it. if you're a game developer, do it. Seriously, yeah. do it. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe, into, we'll have to wait until it gets integrated into Visual Studio for to see any developers actually use it, but, well, you know. Well, okay, now I'm thinking about this, like, if you're releasing your game on Itch, maybe worth looking into. Yeah. 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 Unless you want well, to use the Itch client that I keep forgetting exists. That I have installed, but I never started up well, because I, mean, I forget it exists. <laughs> even if you get the client or whatever, man, I'm like, hell, just point it at this uh, app image. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Make that what you release. Or not. Right. However you get going. All right. All right. Well, that, I think that's going to do it for this. Coming up next, it's not the Swedish volleyball team. It's the, it's the Texas volleyball team. We're throwing chairs at Hyper Gun Sport. Biggity bang, big bang, bang, biggity, biggity bang. It's the chair acquisition time. We're throwing chairs at games, running them on Linux. I don't have a rhyme for this. Yeah, uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, as, as mentioned, it's chair acquisition. We run some games on different Linux distributions, uh, all on different hardware. And then we give you a very, very hyper active uh, final score based on lawn chairs. One chair means that it's crap. Four chairs means that it's amazing. In the middle, you can figure it out. This week, we're taking a look at Hyper Gun Sport by Necrosoft Games, which is a brutal fucking name. I fucking love it, man. Um, developed on the Unity engine, you can pick it up for a $24.99 US. What is it? An ac- arcade action game about shooting a ball into a goal. It's cyberpunk volleyball with guns. I gotta thank the uh, developers, Necrosoft Games, for sending us some keys on Creator Oh, Connect. Pedro named it Hyper Gun Sport. That M4V, that's why it's not picking up. Okay. Oh, oh, I forgot to change the name. Sorry, my bad. Oopsie, oopsie. <laughs> well, well then. Uh, yeah, so I guess I, I get I get to go first uh, this time. It's very rare. So on uh, Fedora 3764-bit, I launched this out of the box on both the R93900X with the GTX 1080 Ti and Venzold 8150 with the RX 580. Um, so launch is fine. Hold 60 at on uh, both NVIDIA and AMD. No windowed mode or graphical options and no online multiplayer. We'll get to that in a little bit. There are correct DualShock lifts. I got to say, I uh, got to give this game credit. A lot of Unity games don't handle input very well. But I, when I was playing multiplayer, I was using a Steam controller. My player two was using the DualShock controller and whoever pressed the button last, you get the appropriate prompt. So I got to give you props for that. Uh, the jump button placement is a little questionable, but it works after a while. And the pixel art, very well done, and the soundtrack is pretty fucking bumping. Fun-wise, yeah, this is a multiplayer game. Uh, I tried with a bot for 15 minutes, and it was zero fun. There's a story here in the circuit mode, and the setting looks kind of neat. The background art looks very, very nice. Uh, unfortunately, as I mentioned earlier, there's no online multiplayer, only Steam remote play. So, like I said, no online multiplayer. Fortunately for me, I got a live-in partner who I can conscript into playing video games, and between the two of us, we only got the one brain cell, which we were able to harness into a pretty good time. Uh, once you get the hand, hang of uh, coordinating power shots with your partner, you get to see how the mechanics really jive, and you can just, like, one-shot the goals. Uh, it's pretty great, until it starts introducing, uh, multi- or, uh, so, so so clearly the developers of this game watched our old Rocket League streams and thought, Venn's multiplayer mutator selection, this should be an actual gameplay mechanic. So they programmed their own Venn stone to pick mutators for the various uh, modes in the ladder, and it was Tiny Ball that defeated me. We just could, we couldn't grok. Didn't, didn't work out too well. But it was a pretty fun time. But that only happened when there's more than one person, and I'm sure that 2v2 multiplayer is a blast in couch setting. But there's no way to actually do this in 2023 unless you have four people in a physical room, which is less likely these days. Add some online multiplayer, then you could justify a $25 price tag. Otherwise, you're just going to get two chairs. That's uh, going to be a lot of that going around tonight. Uh, over here on the Ryzen 7 uh, 5800X 3D and the um, RX 6700XC, it runs out of the box uh, on the Steam Deck. It also ran out of the box. It holds 144 um, FPS on the desktop and 60 on the deck. So it's doing just fine. Don't touch the keyboard or the mouse before you pick a player when you're starting. Uh, otherwise, uh, you're stuck with the mouse and keyboard for player one. It seems like the controller has a lower priority. It's not ideal, especially if you need to all tap to tell OBS to start recording or pick the game window, whatever the case may be. Uh, at first, I thought there might be something wrong because I was playing it with the alpaca. 
it's like, is there something wrong with the alpaca? So I turned on the DualShock 4. No, it's the same thing. Tried it on the deck. No, it's there too. They actually did bind the jump button to the left trigger. The fuck? <laughs> uh, yeah. So outside of that, the background bleeps and boops were pretty bumping. Uh, it's very busy on screen, but kudos to the visual artist or artists. Uh, you can always see the bullshit trajectory the ball is doing straight into your goal because it will do that a lot. Uh, as for the fun, yeah, it 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 they describe it as cyberpunk volleyball with guns. Uh, that's a very accurate description. The guns have a very low rate of fire, except for some of the uh, members of some of the teams while using the special. Uh, so you have to make those shots count because you may and often don't uh, get enough time to reload. Uh, it's very easy to skip entire chunks of text in the tutorial if you're stuck with the mouse because you had the audacity to try and use it to uh, click on the menu, uh, which was the case for me. <laughs> and the first few runs that I attempted on this game were pretty bad. I couldn't even get past like the second level. It was uh, until this run that if you're looking at the video version with the uh, Congo team, that I actually managed to get all the way through to the end. Uh, and yeah, once I beat the single player mode, my brain went, yeah, we're done. At first, I didn't really re know why my brain would go like that. And then I remembered, oh, yeah, this is couch co-op only. Yeah, we're done. It's not a bad game. It doesn't sound bad, doesn't look bad. It, it doesn't even play bad at all. It's just clearly a multiplayer game without proper COVID safe multiplayer support. So it gets two chairs. All right, that's two chairs for that. So how does it function over on what will eventually become Debian 12? On a thread ripper 1920X, 32 gigs of RAM, NVMe drives, and a 3060. Well, what more can I say than, I mean, it runs, right? Because it does. There's not much to report on that topic since uh, the options, bit on the slim side, you can control the volume and whether or not your controller wiggles around, takes off across your desk. That's another option. It's got some um, usability stuff as well, but I picked up the Xbox controller, which I was happy about. Everything was mapped logically, I guess. I mean, this is like something the kids do these days, though, right? You get the jump on your trigger buttons and action on trigger buttons. Back in my day, we didn't have trigger buttons. So anyway, funky-ass soundtrack, though. Good job on that. So if you're watching the video version of this, you've already seen it. You've already seen it. Let's just be honest. The, the, the art in this game... Is ridiculously up, man. It is so overpowered for what this game is. You're like, holy fuck, this is amazing. Like, I want this team to make like Freeways of Anger, their spiritual successor of Streets of Rage, or take a take a crack at like a hipster pixel strider game. <laughs> and I'm I'm even hesitant to call it hipster pixels. So it's like looking at this, man. You're like, oh, this is this is what I imagine Mega Drive games look. Like, like back in the 90s when my brain meets was like filling in the missing pixels and art shit with imagination juice. It looked like this in my head. Like, this is just gorgeous. The main reason I played through the levels initially was just to check out the background artwork and the different characters. I'm going to lie about that. But let's talk about the game itself, because it's 2v2 volleyball. But you brought that up. It's got a couple extra steps thrown in. No online multi, so you're going to be stuck playing uh, the circuit mode as a striker. You could. Could play as a keeper, but that AI is a bit pants on head, so you just want to avoid that. Five teams to beat, pick, play against, do your things, and after that, you get to play them again. <laughs> but it's modifier. different this time, because they put some extra shit in the way, the mutators. You know the first round of mutators? That wasn't too bad, though, man. I got, like, the extra Drive bouncy ball. ball. Yeah, with high grab, so it's like, well, that just nuked everything, didn't it? Didn't notice much of a difference on that. Then I finished that match. The next match... I'm kind of paraphrasing, but I think it was 90 points to win the match instead of 60. A small ball. And we're not going to start keeping score until you get 30 points on the ball. And I just bounced right the hell out, pun intended. Man, I was like, uh-uh, I ain't got time for that. So it put me at about 50 minutes of playtime total in single player forever alone mode. And it's that no proper support, no online multiplayer support. And you know what? Remote play doesn't count. You knew that. Uh, the average consumer doesn't even know what the hell remote play is. Let's be honest. Uh, we do, because this is what we focus on. So that kind of makes Hyperlight Gunsport uh, local co-op only. And just, I'm going to bring it up too. Did the last three years not teach us anything? <laughs> like at all? We're just no. being oblivious, like la 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 thing with back to normal? 
There's a reason. This game has an average player count of not point three <laughs> players for the last 30 days. And only half of that is down to the ridiculous price of $24.99. My advice, if you didn't watch the whole show, go back and watch the Steam segment. For your next co-op party game, save four bucks and go ahead and pick up the Frame Makers, which is the uh, Battle Royale type thing with the indie characters. Smash Bros., yeah. Yeah, give yeah. that a look. Um, yeah, I don't have anything like hateful or bad to say about the game other than... It, it needs online multiplayer. That's yeah. like yes. li- literal, literally it. And like... <laughs> Be- because it lacks that feature, it dies. <laughs> At twenty four ninety nine, it's like yeah, that that doesn't fly for what this is either. Just as a game, because this is this is a uh, local yeah, and volleyball. Like, uh, like I mean, and, it looks fucking amazing though. And like Lon- Lonnie hadn't seen this before. I put it in her after after we she got the hang of the game. She's like, yeah, no, this is really fun. This is a really fun game. It's like, yeah, yeah. W- would you like to play this with other pe- people? Well, too bad you can't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. You gotta have them in your living room, uh, sharing all the uh, diseases and all the microbes with them. Okay, let, let's put it in perspective. This costs more than the latest Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game. Yes, and that yeah. has six-player <laughs> online multiplayer. Oh, so. oh, you can do local, <laughs> a mixture of local and, remote, and yeah. online. And, uh, yeah, six players in total. It's... Uh-huh. Yeah, it's it, yeah. It, when it's, you start putting it, that in under that lens, you're like, "Ooh, it's not a very good uh, return on investment." That was it. No yeah. uh-uh. value proposition on this one. It it isn't there, unfortunately. Still. Yeah. Um, where where, where, where do you, I, where do you think the the good price point would be? Like, pick this up if it was like ten dollars, uh, five dollars. I wouldn't buy this unless it had a uh, online multiplayer. I wouldn't even consider I, I, online I, I, multiplayer. Yeah. Absolutely, like fifteen dollars with how good it looks and how well it actually plays. Sure. I want whoever is responsible for the pixel art in this uh, to remake Strider or Streets of Rage because, like, this is what I imagine Streets of Rage. This is what I wanted it to look like. This type of like hyper detailed, this like pixel art. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so well done, or a fighting game or something. Because uh, you, you, whatever it is, you know, you got it. You got it. Got the sauce. Oh man, uh, you got the power. <laughs> all right, coming up next, Valve's going to steal all your games, you guys. Oh, my God. It's a hate mail segment. Apparently, the world is ending. And I, I usually joke at the start of the hate mail uh, that uh, the end is nigh, but uh, someone was very adamant this week, but we'll get to that. If you, if you too, would like to give us your um, post-apocalyptic predictions... By all means, go to LinuxGameCast.com, hit the contact button, there's a form you gotta fill. Make sure you read the caveats as to whether or not they may apply to you. If they don't, then by all means, just don't post any URLs. The spam bot do not like URLs. <laughs> uh, LGC Weekly is the show that you need to pick in order to send some hate mail over here. Uh, and yeah, the rest is fairly self-explanatory, I say. Yeah, stick your dick in it. Oh <laughs> well, our, our our first bit of hate mail is a bit of a response to something I said last time. Oh man, time. can I can I uh, start this up? Please do. Because <laughs> last week you dared say that uh, you know Valve's you don't ever have to worry about like Valve going under and all of your games disappearing and all that shit, right, Pedro? Wasn't it something along those lines? Uh, it was about Valve not you know taking away your rights uh, to the, the party. games. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they might take away your right to part B. Who knows? <laughs> but speedruns, not part E. The nobody ever plays that route. However, man. I'm always like route C, dude. Eh, I, I, I'm no. I'm not gonna make that joke. <laughs> I almost came out of my mouth. But speedruns, uh, he uh, or they uh, have. A diverging I, I like how you have uh, phrased this as like it's like a ball of fucking listeners that have gotten together. <laughs> well, well, I mean, we, 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 we don't know who, the, who this individual is other than the we fact don't, that they are speedruns. That, that was my, uh, my fault we for assuming. We are. <laughs> we. Uh, but they say, no one believes Steam is draconian DRM. They're all going to take your games away. That's what Jordan said. There we go. Um, my dude, <laughs> Valve is a business and mergers and acquisitions are a thing. They could easily, you want to talk about comma splicing? They could yeah. easily change the terms overnight and pull the plug on all your games without some kind of spyware TPM chip nonsense. 
<laughs> so, all right, all right. So, my, my dude, Valve is not a publicly traded company in danger of being bought out. And yes, technically, they could sell the company to someone else who would do that. Um, and th- you, you know, and then you would theoretically lose all your games in that situation. Same thing would honestly happen to GOG unless you happen to download all of your games and have them on a hard drive. That's what happens when you delegate storage of your games to cloud services. If you don't actively have copies of them, that's I gotta be always honest a risk. With you, though. I mean, like this sounds like the type of motherfucker that's got like he, he shows off all his hard drives in his collection. And, he's like, and, 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 and you know, maybe 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 you are one of these pers- people. But here's the thing, though. Most of the games that you buy on Steam will just run perfectly fine without Steam. Uh, there, there's certainly stuff that has like deep Steam integration. And sure, that's going to be oh, a there, little tricky. It's fucking rare to find something with like enough DRM that you just can't launch it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, Most it, of it I doesn't mean, have any DRM on them. And like, oh, and a lot of these games are like live <laughs> services too. So like, you wouldn't be able to play them without your Steam account, anyways, because that's how you authenticate with the, with their service. Um, so like, yeah, it's within the realm of possibility. But you know, monkeys can fly out of my ass too. Like, <laughs> <laughs> hashtag swing. Yeah, no, Valve at this point, if they tried to pull basically what you're describing, which is uh, electronic artsisms. Uh, they would lose a lot of the goodwill they've accrued up to this point. All of it, yeah. effectively. Okay, here's yeah. the thing, Pedro. Here's the thing, Jordan. At some point, you have enough money to be evil. Yes, and and, you and know, Valve you, absolutely does, but thus far, they've proven I don't that know. they don't need I don't, to for, be. We don't know what Gavin's number is. <laughs> Because that motherfucker might have a goddamn red lightsaber just sitting there <laughs> waiting for that no, no, thing to no, pick he, over. He, 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 ha- he has like a, a, like a giant egg timer, like a, gi- a giant like hourglass. And when that last grain of sand drops to the bottom, he's like, now is the, <laughs> the time. Darth Gabe. <laughs> Execute order 69. <laughs> yeah, and like literally every computer who's running Steam just explodes and like kills us all with shrapnel. No, like, no, no. It's better than that, dude. And like they, uh, everybody just walks in the data center and they powered off. Yeah, no, I'm, no I'm, listen, listen. <laughs> Clearly, Gabe is the villain from Live Free and Die Hard, my favorite mm-hmm. Kevin Smith movie. Okay. <laughs> But I'm glad now, Valve up it. to this point, they've proven that they don't need to be dicks to make stupid amounts of money. They just need to have a sale every couple of months. That's it. Yeah, I'm, I mean, it, like I said, it's it's possible, but it really it really doesn't seem likely. And if it does, then you know we'll eat shit. I mean, it boils down to like strange hill to die on, like, but also with a firm mixture on my side. Like, I don't fucking care, man. I, I'm sorry. I mean, here's the at the end of the day, these are fucking video games, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, no, no, no one's gonna live or die because yeah. of them. Like I, this is the only I will we're be doing mad this for entertainment. For a bit, but I, I'm, I'm, I'd be cross for a second, but like, like, all right. I, I you mean, don't, it's it, not like it, you it would, it would be a be lot passing. of wasted money. But. You're not gonna be walking yes. over like there's <laughs> this was your your father's copy of Sonic. <laughs> okay, now uh, you're starting to convince me. Maybe he I should buy like a 16 ass, terabyte Pedro. hard Up his drive. Ass. <laughs> and download the whole thing. <laughs> do it, do it. You know, you know what? You know, if if you know if you, it's I won't tell you to not not trust corporations. That you you always never trust corporations. Uh but like yeah, if you want if you want to back up all your Steam games, go ahead. If you want to back up your God games, that's fine. Uh mm-hmm. I think I think that most of them are going to be available via Steam for the foreseeable future. I could be wrong. I think I mean here's the thing if Steam goes down we probably get bigger problems than Steam being down yeah no that well, means the internet's probably <laughs> down <laughs> listen I, ha- like I have plenty of game thing. I have plenty of games on Epic that I got for absolutely free <laughs> can keep me occupied can you, can you just imagine like uh, like having like a kicked out window like fucking sniping off zombies trying to crawl up the house and be like behind you be like hey is Steam back up yet yeah. <laughs> it's like I really want to play some Left 4 Dead you guys blam, blam. very inconvenient <laughs> This IRL left for dead's becoming very expensive. I've already had to trade like two entire cartons of cigarettes for like three just, bullets. Yeah, no. I hate this map. Can we? Can Are we you get happy a new now, one? Linux Gamecast? <laughs> yeah. Look, we we did it. Fucking it's our told fault. you, right? It's our it's all our, it's our fault, and I'm not sorry. Ladies and gentlemen, um, one thing I am sorry about is it's time to wrap up this nonsense. You can always catch us around uh, eight thirty Eastern Standard Time live right on twitch but if you want to get a hold of me you can find me tomorrow actually i don't know like by the time you're listening to this is probably monday too late womp womp but <laughs> i will be doing time. um editing 
video Linux, nonlit, whatever. I don't know. I'll be on YouTube talking some shit, editing this very show. Come and hang out and watch it. It'll be in our Discord notification when we go live. But at Vinstone on Twitter, at Vin at mass.linuxgamecast.com. Always you can scream at me in our IRC, Twitter, or Twitch. You know, pretty easy to hold to. I'm Jordan. I am here to take all of your games away. Give them to me. Nom, Jordan, nom, nom. You, Jordan, you're just called a gent. How do you feel about yep. that? A gent? A gent? I don't, I don't, I don't, gent? D- gents, like the, the musical genre? Are Canadians Mishuga? allowed to be gents? Sure, why not? i uh, got to follow me on Twitter at The Burning Fool, Mastodon at Frojo <laughs> at Mastodon.com, and Twitch at twitch.tv slash Burning Fool. <gasps> And uh, yes, uh, I look forward to Jordan giving a read to my uh, alpaca review. That's coming up soon. Uh, so <laughs> I, I look forward to just being hammered over the head for all the so time. Jordan, do you, do you want to sit with me one evening and we'll turn that like uh, 27 minute review into a one minute YouTube short? Yes. <laughs> we'll put that shit on TikTok. It's yeah. just all of the um, TikTok. <laughs> just all of the bloopers into like a minute. <laughs> Sure, go ahead. At unaccounted for on Twitter. Follow me. I'll follow you back. <laughs> Time for some credits. Yeah. It's like Pedro was stuffed into me. I'm stuffed into them. That's about right. It's like a, it's like, it's like a Matryoshka podcast host. <laughs> And Ven grew three sizes that day. Yeah, we gotta thank our advisors, Omegas, Aaron, and we gotta thank our executive producers scrolling up very slowly. My dog when Bob Ramp, Scott Michaud, Atomic Ass, Mike G, Mike T, Drummer, Kaku, George Pebble, Tomaj Unoid, and Hakim, and our little Nikki fan, Super Desto. Just the one. The one would see monsters coming up. Reno, Rider X, Magna, Trudgy, Veritanuda, Justin, Frostclaw, Nubbin, David, Darkwing, System T. I should have taken a longer breath. Ogi one <laughs> All the lovely, beautiful Death Notes. Nova, Basil, Chad, Romero, Marcin, Rene, Leonardo, Dak, Kim, Smash, Chris, Jill and Steve, Benjamin, Doomwad, Steam Beater, Dean, Back, Gamatron, Dodger, Santhris Gaming, Rue, Turtle Over, Cheesy Bacon, Infox, Dog, Swine, Oil of Hope, Jalad, Alex, and Aromatic Dev. Chairlings, we got Jason B, Lord dev? Maka, <laughs> Aromatic Dev, he's stinky, Brock Y, Giovanni, <laughs> Joanna, Gronk Delonka, Paulo, Greg L, I can't read that far, Mr. Alert, Dorgi, Colin N, Edmund, Massimoni, Rohit, Mir, Jonas Rulo. Okay. Pick your so, children. Yeah. Two Steves, Steve B and Steve E. <laughs> Biatko, Dismec, and our fuckers, look at these guys. All right. You know what? Right now, I'm going to take this off loop because I'm tired of it doing the thing. Yes. What are you going to do now, video? I'm going to change you to and not loop. Ooh. I, I guess it's, it's just going to end, right? Then if this is going to do it again. We'll see you next Just week. like this podcast. Bye. Bye. Five dudes. <laughs> <laughs>